Hi, it's a highly connected world and today we found out just how connected due to the failure of um, many, many Microsoft-based systems all around the world. Hi, my name is Dave Farley and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe and if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. I'd like to take a look at the Microsoft outage today of systems of all kinds th throughout the world. So services have been disrupted in banking, airlines, TV stations and many, many others. Here in the UK, uh, train services have stopped. In the US, flights were cancelled by Delta, United and American Airlines um, and, and, and travel on those airlines was grounded completely for a while. Services here in the UK were, uh, were, were affected for uh, GPs and pharmacies so people couldn't get their medicines and GPs appointment making services were not working. People couldn't pay for their groceries uh, um, in supermarkets. Um, so this is quite a big deal and has affected many, many millions of people's lives. And that's how important software is to the world and the world's economy these days. There was an impact on at least the UK stock exchange today as a result of these outages, just because of the nervousness of how long it might take to recover from them. So this is not a minor thing. This is serious grown-up stuff. This is a software engineering channel. So what are the software engineering implications of an outage like this? Well, it's certainly far too early to be able to dig into this failure with any degree of precision or accuracy. But even based on the very sketchy headlines so far of what went on, um, there are some questions that I think are worth asking as the next stage in trying to make sure that outages like this don't happen again, at least for the company that's at the root of these, a company called Crowds CrowdStrike. What CrowdStrike have said publicly is that they are now actively working with customers impacted by a defect found in a single content update for Windows hosts only. Mac and Linux hosts were not impacted. This is not a security incident or a cyber attack. The issue has been identified, isolated, and a fix has been deployed. Uh, and then they go on to say that customers who would like more detail can check out Crowd, CrowdStripe's uh, uh, website and representatives. But I think that, that from a software engineering perspective, the questions that we are posed with are really about how could we stop this kind of thing from happening again? And in part, that is going to re result in what went wrong this time. So I'd have certainly have questions to ask about their testing strategy. Why wasn't this caught by testing? Could it have been caught by testing? Or was it just one of those unfortunate things that where they were unlucky? So I'd like, to, I'd be very interested in how they go about testing their uh, their changes like this for such an important, clearly um, consequential update. Why weren't they practicing canary releasing? Canary releasing is a strategy where we release first into l fewer lower risk environments, monitor the impact of the change for a time before pro proceeding to roll that change out more widely. This seems to have been a, a, a broadcast rollout to everyone and everyone failed at the same time as far as the news reporting suggests. Observability. How is it that CrowdStrike weren't the first people to know that this was what was going wrong? How is it that they only find out as a result of the failures? as they seem to have. I might be doing them a disservice. Maybe they did find out early, it just took them a while to fix. But it doesn't obviously seem sound like that from the reporting so far. Um, and finally, if they were practicing good software engineering techniques, like continuous delivery, why didn't they roll back the change? Or at least roll out their change just as quickly as they rolled out the, um, the failure? 
Uh, why isn't the world fixed now? Because as far as I can see, there are still services that haven't resumed normal service following this outage. Now, all of these things, you know, may have good, good answers, but I think that they're all questions that ought, that CrowdStrike, at the very least, ought to be posing itself if they want to do a better job in future. Um, and this is really what I mean when I talk about applying software engineering thinking to software development. It's not that we expect precision. It may be that there's, you know, this is one of those unfortunate kinds of failures that happens always. It's a facet of engineering that from time to time things go wrong. But good engineering is about what happens when we find those things. So what we should be doing now is saying, OK, these things went wrong. How would we prevent the same kinds of things from causing a problem again in future? And the kinds of techniques that I've just mentioned, testing, canary releasing, better observability and the ability to roll back quickly and efficiently would all reduce at least the impact of a problem, even if that problem occurs. High quality software is not about creating perfection or achieving perfection. It's about assuming that things can go wrong and allowing ourselves to work in ways where we can deal with things when they do go wrong safely, quickly and efficiently. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed our content. If you did, please do consider supporting us by checking out the links below to our Patreon community. And thanks as ever for your support of our channel.